The neighboring countries draw level as Astralis comes back on map number two. The first time they beat NIP in a long amount of time. And according to Anders, Malmo might as well be Denmark for all he's concerned. And we'll see if the Danish can actually reclaim it from the Swedes right now. Well, it's going to be an interesting affair. Last time they played this map was at Collusion Poker. And that's when NIP actually came out on top. I think it was 16-10. And yeah. that's before NIP started restructuring themselves. We've actually seen it online recently. They actually looked like they've got a much stronger approach in terms of training, having those set pieces, and especially towards the inside bomb side. They have some very efficient inside takes there, utilizing all the smokes and molotovs there. And they actually have lots of different bits and pieces ready to go. So that's going to be an interesting factor. I agreed. I also want to point out that NIP in the former version, the, the, the original oh, yeah. version of Bit Train, of history, yeah. not really. I'm just saying they were always good at the map. Okay. And so it's not surprising that they have been working on Train. It's something that GetRight was very comfortable on. It used to bring out the Auto Sniper on it. I, I would say I, original CSGO, the Auto Sniper, now we think about Get Right toward that CT stairs on Mirage. I would actually say Train was where he was actually better with it for a long period of time. So it's interesting that they have revamped it. You're right, though, the Kluge one, and they said that on the desk. That was when Astralis were the favorites in the tournament. Fnatic were already out at that point in time. It was their tournament to take by so many people's uh, opinion, and, and they got really crushed by that. So that's definitely going to be uh, hard on their memory. Well, at least they've managed to wake up here. Cash was an absolute nightmare for Astralis. They got done 16-5. We go into Inferno. They seem like Device finally wakes up. He gets a very strong game in total. I think you got 24 frags. That's the and best player on the team right there. What, the guy who's not in the chair? Yeah, exactly. And then Dupree on the second half as well. He really did save them in so many situations, got them in to some key plays as well with his opening frags and lurk play towards that arch side. So we'll see what they can bring to the table here. The new problem I have with NIP in general is the, the AWP situation. Forrest looks so on point with his rifles right now. It seems like he's like hitting everything with the AK, but yeah. he also forced onto orb quite a lot of the time as well, right? He is a good orper, but I don't, he's definitely not on device level, let's be honest. Oh, 100%. I'll totally, I, I'll never argue that that he is, but at the same time, last map, we did see Pith on the CT side going to it quite a exactly. bit. Exactly. That's why I'm saying this, this is why it's a problem for me in terms of the inconsistencies in terms of across the board. We, we, we tend to think it's going to be Forest Orping most of the time, but that map we saw Pith bringing it out, like, where does this go? Well, and, and this kind of lends itself to two, arts, two points that you could strengthen that argument with. The first is, uh, TSM era Astralis when they were kind of dynamic with their AWP. It worked at first because it was unexpected, but it never really stabilized. Now they're trying to get device back on it, like you're saying. And as well with Jason's argument in the Kusta simple aspect, you know, where do you get someone comfortable? How do you get comfortable with a particular weapon, particular play style if you're constantly shuffling it out? Now, I think everyone needs to know every play style. That's a different argument. I'm not, I'm not arguing against it with this. But again, I, I think that there needs to be stability. Well, Matthew, yes. as you can see on the screen right now, there's still our tickets available for the arena this weekend. You're going to be there. If I would like to meet Sadikist, like who wouldn't, and get your picture taken with him, go to masters.dreamhack.com and pick Pictures up. are $1 each unless you're a cute blonde Swedish girl, and then they're free. For free? Yeah. Really? Mm-hmm. Well, fair enough. How much have you got to sign it? I'm sorry? How sorry much? If I'm going to sign it, how yeah. much is it going to cost them? Ooh, uh, depends on what kind of marker I'm using and what I'm signing in particular. But, I mean, eBay value, I think it's going for around 1000 right now. Oh, that's not bad. That's quite cheap, actually. Yeah, it's not too, too bad. So there are a couple of packages available as well, like a VIP package. I yeah, think it includes about. food. So we can actually uh, not only take pictures. To, I'm talking about, obviously, still to the cute Swedish girls. Not only take pictures together, but we can go for, for dinner as well. We can, we can do the whole thing. Well, what can he say about that one? Thank you very much for that information, Matthew. I'm sure everyone will be rushing to buy their tickets now so they can go and meets Sadikist at the event. What a tantalizing prospect that is. Looks like we're getting ready for the third map here. We'll be training if you are just joining us. Where have you been? It's been a great series so far. NIP taking the first map on cash, and then Astralis biting back on Inferno. Looking very strong indeed, revitalized after they've gone to that second map. NIP didn't look too disheartened after the defeat, so it seemed like they were ready to go. And Matt, what's your favorite app at the moment out of interest, apart from Tinder, of course. Well, Tinder is my favorite app because I can score, but there is another app on your phone that will let you do the same thing. Okay, what is that? The Score Esports app gives you all of the information, and there's been a lot of upsets that you can read about in this tournament. Please, by all means, iOS and Android, go download it. Right now. Do you've so. Got, you've I, got time while we're waiting for this game to start, so go get that. 
and then you're going to be much more connected to the game. You can read some articles while you're waiting. You get might actually pictures. get people that are informative to tell you about the games instead yeah, of Henry and get I. Get some stats. All of that good stuff's going to be there. So just go down like that right now and buy the tickets for the weekend as well. There we go. I think we've plugged everything. Anything <laughs> else you can think of? Oh, I can think of something else for you to plug. So let's <laughs> go there. Well, then. Looks like we have been delayed here a little bit longer. I think we have been waiting for Astralis player to get back on the server. That's going to be... It actually does. We, do, we could go full circle on this because, you know, you know, the cute Swedish girls that want to come here, if they if they go on Tinder, they can actually match me ahead of time. We can work it out. And while they're waiting for me to respond, then they can download the Score Esports app and get their tickets online. It's perfect. It's a, It all comes full circle in the end, doesn't it? Yeah, it's pretty good. I have no idea what... No, you heard him. <laughs> You've got to say it now, whatever he said. <laughs> uh, can you, Nick, please give me more information. Oh, right. Episode two. Yeah. Oh, right. Episode two. Star Wars premieres tomorrow. No, I'm kidding. The second edition of the documentary will, will be released tomorrow as well for uh, for DreamHack. So you'll definitely want to see that. I want to catch see all of that. Uh, yeah, it's one of the only films that you like to. We've been releasing a few interesting documentaries ourselves in the Room on Fire, guys. That's true. We have. There's been lots of activity. That's another thing. And, and this one um, is, is all put on behind the scenes. Anders and Semler helping support this, bringing in Phil, who used to work with Mouse Sports, does some video editing. There's been some cool behind-the-scenes stuff. And not only that, actually, while we're on the point of behind-the-scenes, Snapchat's become a popular avenue. I've been trying to use it. I'm not great because I'm a little bit busy, but DreamHack itself, I think it's DreamHack Live. You can actually see a ton of behind-the-scenes activity that's been going on at the event, both the build, the booths, the teams ready, and all that stuff. And you've already seen me at Bunny is as well. That's the place to go. Who doesn't want to see that? Did you do one of those filters? Yes. Oh, God. So go check that out if you want to screenshot it and send it to me. It looks like the match is starting. I can see Evo counting down, but I only see four players on the server. So, is it lying to me? Um, that's a good point. Yes. I think. Oh, uh, was there six on one team? And that's why we don't see because Cajun just there you go. Team switched it. Yeah, that's. I think that's. So Matt, was. don't get ahead of yourself. This is the knife round. So don't start <laughs> casting it or calling about the arms. I haven't checked made. Reddit yet. I haven't checked yet Reddit yet, but I really hope that's. Good. I had a lot of people tweeting me the link and the odd shot, so I'm good. sure it's. It's not, to be fair, it's one of the, it's not that funny, but it's, it's quite amazing. embarrassing. It's amazing. But uh, yeah, it's going to be the knife round, so don't get too excited. Maybe, maybe you could do a speed cast, seeing as we built this up for so long. Uh, Give the people a payoff after having a day of the delay here. We'll see. Come on, let's do it. For old times. Can we get it on the screen? Yes, can we get the knife round on <clears> screen, please? If we're going to do this, we got to have it on screen. That's the only way it works. Production doesn't want me to do it! Come on. I can speed, rest, speed cast get right's face. There we go. Oh, all right. <clears throat> well, it Starting is in right. three, two, one, go. And get right going to take the first splash, but Zipix already puts him back down. And now KGB is going to get a forward stance. All four of them working together. One goes to the inside of the train, but now they group back up. at the one on top, that I'm not sure who it is, but it's Dupree that drops back down. Now Astral is going to source out and isolate Forrest back inside of the IV position. NIP not able to compensate for that. Not able to flank him back as they walk up the ladder. It's Kerrigan that sits at the top, and you can't climb and snipe at the same time. He just sits up there and cuts you apart. As Kerrigan going to do work again. Potentially takes down Freiburg, but now it's Pitts gets back in the KGB, and it's just him that remains against him and exists. Where is Exist? He's still behind them all, so Pitts going to try and bait them away. Be the hot cloth on the fevered head like a needle. They'll lead them and they'll follow like thread. But where it can exist, come back in from behind. He's going to try and isolate this into a one-on-one -on -one right now. And it is not going to work out in his favor. No, I take it back. He does get to pre, But in the meantime, he did lose his teammate. Now it's just him that's alive. He's going to stay on top of the train, not let him come up the ladder. And it's going to be just the 12-speed to work with. He has got the butterfly knife, but he has to fly like a sting butterfly and sting like a bee. He's got the first one already on the Kerrigan. Has to fall away further still in the E-box. It's low on device. He's got this down one-on-one. -on -one. He actually works it out. The clutch from Exist. I love it. Don't know who I'm impressed with more exists than that massive clutch of the knife round. Are you actually carrying it for that amount of time? Well played, sir. That was quite impressive. <laughs> <laughs> I was kind I of feeling bad for you after <laughs> that long. Pistol, like normally, it kind of takes like 10 seconds. You're having to do that for like a whole minute. So congratulations. That was absolutely perfect. Nice work. That's uh, got us back into the mood after that little bit of a delay here. We'll be getting into the final map here. We'll be trained. And looks like Astralis will be starting on the CT side, NIP on the T's. And as I said, NIP have been working very hard at the boot camps. Threats have some massive impact in terms of the strategy game for the Swedes, and you'll see some very nice set pieces towards that inside site, especially. They seem to favor that area once they get control of the upper hall. So let's see if we can jump straight into this one. Matthew, in terms of predictions, we haven't really discussed this, specifically train. Who do you feel has got the upper hand here, considering the previous matchup and what we've seen so far? It's tough. Astralis are decent on this map. Remember, we talk about Virtus Pro and how they have a, a, they're sort of meta-defining in a lot of ways on this map. They've got that smoke on Ivy. They've got Taz that plays so well on the inner site. But the team that actually upset them and started to make them doubt themselves on this map was Astralis. Yeah. And Cajun B, 
Kerrigan both play off each other very well in the A site. They utilize the quad position well, but like you're saying, NIP has improved so much on this map. Well, here we go, then. We are into the pistol. We'll be NIP with five sets of armor here and actually going towards that inside site. It's going to be Pitts and Get Right controlling the upper halls here. The bomb is still towards main entrance, and we have got Exist holding for any aggression here. So the CT is still trying to find out where the T's may lie. Going to be falling back to more of a default position here. Time ticking away, as I mentioned. And IP don't really have much to work with in terms of any sort of utility here. So they're going to be relying on brute force to get themselves into the bomb sites. Freiburg has gone down to 22 HP, Forest on 57. So I'm ticking away now, working out where they'll be going here as they start to rotate back towards Pop Dog. Looks like it will be an A bomb side attack. Exist, the hero of the knife round. Because let's face it, it was pretty awesome. He's going to try and get down toward Ivy, but it's Forrest that opens up on a Kerrigan. That gives him some space to do so because they have to pull themselves back inside of the site. Get right, gets it. Zippix. Oh, still drop down, though. And it is still three versus three. Kit in cage in hands. Thankfully, he sits on 66 HP as well because no armor. He needs to try and survive in this situation. Dupree's falling away. It's 12 HP. He's faced by Exist, though, and Forrest is here. They can actually go for the trade kill on this. Cajun tries to swing out to help. He's dropped. Kit's a long way from the site. Dupree's dead as well, and it doesn't even matter. They're going to get this all this as the bomb goes down. And Device, if he wants any chance of defusing, has to take that path. He has to walk toward the quick Kit, excuse him, to make this possible. He hasn't managed to pick it up yet, but a three-on-one as Exist finds the last two frags there. He's got so much work to do, Device. Does manage to pick up that defuse Kit, but just has no control of the situation. That kill is not going to happen. Forrest finishes things off. NIP here. You can see them coming to life. Every kill, we could hear screaming coming from the other side of the room. And now Astralis forcing back into the second round. They will be getting double scouts here. CZs, five sevens. And we'll see what kind of bite NIP brings to the table. This is the burst fire from Exist. And it, I have to say, it's, it's a pretty awful feature of the Glock, but it works very close range on low HP players, I'm for sure. And NIP. Remember, remember it was Dupree gone. yesterday that accidentally turned it on? on yep, that was a prime example of how bad it could be. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, NIP, three rifles here, two SMGs. They have got smoke grenades as well, so they'll be slowing things down. We'll see whether Cajun B and Carrigan could do anything with these sniper rifles. Can be very effective on train, especially if you have those close range pistol players, you're getting the tags and they're finishing things off. So Dupree and Cajun gonna work together out toward Ivy to try and make up for this. The double scout by Cajun, one of the two players with it. Yeah, there's Kerrigan, so. Back in the dynamic op styles, they were the CT oppers, not device. So it's time to go to the scouts. NIP's going to slow things down, work out the hallways right now. Exist and Pith. Top of the ladder. Zip's waiting with the nade in hand. But they are being slow, NIP. This is how you play these anti-eco situations. To make sure there's no mistakes made, to make sure they don't get caught off. Yeah, they know the force buy potential is going to be there from Astralis. They need to make sure they execute properly on the site. Here come the smokes over, take those snipers out of the game. It looks like they will be attacking the A bomb site. Smokes are successful as well. Cajun now trying to reposition himself and see if he can get attacked. He's on top of the trains. This spots up over top of the smoke. Doesn't actually catch out Kerrigan who gets inside control room. He goes back down the ladder and back up again. So they still don't have the information he's there and he's trying to utilize the scout, but eventually, oh, okay. tagged up through the smoke and get right, takes him down. <laughs> Mac 10, Why what not? a shot. Ball planted after all this as well. And it's the four versus two. That's going to be the end of this force buy from Astralis. Yeah, perfect execution there from NIP. Run the default, work out what you're up against. Do the full wall of smokes there. It's been very impressive NIP's anti goes throughout this series. And this is another prime example of how to do it. Zipex now left with nothing but the P250. He'll be trying to be a little bit cheeky there, but Exist does find him. They get the final kill. It's Exist and Freiburg doing most of the work as they do go up 2 0 here on train. Astralis now, how many, many options? This is the shot from Get Right. First is a headshot for the smoke, and then he just finishes things off as well. Why not? Lovely work. So, full EK from Astralis. Can't really justify anything going into round number three here, so USP, that's about it. Go into the third round. You can assume there's gonna be more of the same. NIP do have get right on the Mac 10 still. He can just go into these bomb sites first. Actually going pretty aggressive here out towards main. Gonna be Molotoving off the key positions, taking vision away with the smokes as well. And Carrigan with the P3000 should be taken down any second now. There it is. Probably gets the first kill. Apparently so. Forrest gonna follow it up. Device goes down. It's Zipix with the only kill so far, and it will be the only kill of the round for Astralis. And now the guns are gonna come back up at that second round force. Ooh, device. 
Okay. Straight to the glass cannon. I was going to say not enough utility, but this is a whole different kettle of fish. But he's got a decent spawn here. He has the opportunity to go towards the upper platform inside. You can see he's got that spawn right at the back. Doesn't look like he'll be taking it, though. He's going to be opting to go towards me. Looked like he was tempted. Uh, Forrest, of course, we mentioned this would be the battle going forward on this side. Forrest versus Device. Actually going to be waiting for some aggression towards the CT side here. We have got Zipex, of course, alone on the inside site. He's going to be spotting the terrorists as they cross. And a lot of damage done to exist. That made us 60 as they make their way towards the inside side. I said before we went into this, NIP like to focus his inside area with their set pieces, get control of the upper platform first, and then they like to execute with Molotov, smoke grenades. And they've got a really good way. It's actually Freiburg that gets most of the entry kills in these kind of tactics. Kerrigan and Zipex together. Device watching out toward Ivy. Has Dupree beside him. Keep in mind, it's the glass cannon, so he's going to have to be a little bit careful on how he peeks. Zipix watching the upper position right now from behind the bomb train. And Forrest might be the first one out. He might actually creep this off into a better position. He'll definitely, at the very least, clear out the angles and watch toward the top, top of Z connector. Exists. He's perfectly ready for this. He's just watching the upper platform. He's going to get a kill here. Oh, gets... Detected though, doesn't land the shot he had to. Now NIP are making their way out to Alpha Ram. They've got the bird's eye view of the bomb site. Very difficult for Astralis to actually find kills here. The KGB gets the first. Smart Molotov as well. The force exists and so, or excuse me, Zipix so far back, but it's Freiburg now on the entry. Device is there. So Glass Cannon gets one kill, but can't get in a position to deny the bomb. And Pith's just going to sit behind that train, use it for the coverage that he needs. He's going to get pushed slowly by Dupree, but Freiburg and Forrest are sitting so far back in these tunnels, they don't want to peek. They have the high ground. And Pith just has to bait out and get information, but the flash comes in. Dupree, he snuck up beside him. There it is, Forrest, the response with the AWP. Down to two, and still that high ground occupied. Only a single flash for Device to try and bait this out. And he misses the shot, has to fall away. The kit right now is on Zipix. He tries to bait it, but he gets dropped. Device has to do this alone. Kit's on top of the bomb to grab, but he doesn't wow. have the drop pre-aimed, and Forrest goes for it. Forrest comes up big in the one versus one versus Device. Didn't even give him the chance to go with the fake defuse. Freiburg giving the war cry there as NIP win the first gun round, sending Astralis onto the EK now as well. Lovely work from NIP, getting that inside control and actually doing the contact play. We're expecting the execution at that point. And just send three players walking across the upper platform. Like I said, once you get that area undetected and you're just battling the rifles, you've got such an advantage, the higher ground working in your favor. And they get an equal exchange of frags and it's a three on three on the retake. And Forrest does some massive work there to win the round. Down to number five now. Astralis investing in some PT-50s in a Desert Eagle device on the CZ. And they will be pushing towards Ivy as well. So Carrigan, joined by Dupree, he's going to be baited in and see whether they can get a kill here, but very defensive and disciplined play here from NIP. Freiburg just waiting for this push. Come on, device. I've got a device in my hands that's going to kill you. Ooh. You like that one? No. I <laughs> Me too. I didn't like it either. It was a bit of a reach. Freiburg's still going to wait, though. Make sure device doesn't push forward. Zipix is waiting inside, as always, shoulder peeking the bottom of that ramp. Three players on that inner side as well, so a bit of a gamble right now for Astralis. Hoping that it pays off, but it's going to be a nice split by the looks of it. Down the ladder, it exists in Pith, and then they'll be added with the forces of the three players coming in from A main. They flashed it off. Device still there. They're not spawning him. That could have been awkward if he wasn't blind, but Get Right does get back out with the AK in time to take him down. It's left the Kerrigan only playing at the quad, alone in the site. They've rotated back from the Z-Connector now, but it's still a lot of smokes for Cajun. Won't be able to deny the plant exists can see above them. You can see how much work they've been putting into these Antico rounds. Gonna drop one frag on towards Freiburg there, but it's very effective so far. Clinically cleaning out every single part of the map, flashing into that main entrance. As you said, had device not been flashed there, he could have picked up a couple of kills with the Caesar there, but they eradicated that being a possibility. 5-0 now here on the first half. In favor of the Swedes. Going to round number six, device back on towards the orb, but Money is getting back to being stabilized for Astralis. Obviously, maximum loss bonus now. You, you talk about, as well, just these anti-ecos. Yeah. If you talk to Threat, if you know Threat at all, it's not like, you know, he, he's a very reasonable person. He, he understands the fundamentals, and that's what they're playing right now is fundamental CS. It's not LG where they're coming up with these crazy meta-breaking strategies. They're not doing anything out yes. of the ordinary NIP, but they're playing the correct style of NIP. They're, you know, keep it simple, stupid, and Threat is very, re very reasonable in that and mature in that sense. So this is exactly being applied to NIP. And I mean, it's, it's beautiful in some ways it's, to watch. It's just stacking the odds in your favor. Instead of taking weird risks and just trying to get frags and forcing unfavored situations, it's actually just waiting up, doing defaults. It might be a bit boring knowing if against pistols, but you want to make sure you don't give anything away. Every frag counts in those scenarios. NIP seem to be keeping players alive every single time. Here we go then, another passive round here. 
Playing the default, waiting for any aggression to come in from the CTs. Dupree edging towards Ivy, seeing if there's anything to pick, but nothing there whatsoever. Zipex, of course, towards inside. He will be joined by Carrigan as well. Double rifle set up towards there. Device looking towards the main entrance, see if he can get anything going here. Good flash in Device. Waits a half second that time to fire. Tries to catch them off a little bit that time. Goes for the second shot, doesn't land it on the drop, but Dupree's on top of the train. He shuffles out and finds Freiburg. You have the bomb plant still going on. Good wall of smokes allows Get Right to get it and get away completely unscathed. Existing toward the ladder at Forest watching down, there's not much entry points that aren't covered off by NIP in this post plant. Still, though, Kerrigan and Cajun B combined to get one more kill, and they're going to push up. Forrest a little bit late to react. It allows one player to go beyond him. That's Dupree, but he has the information. He's there. He's able to flank it back out. Unfortunately, Device gets exist beforehand, and that's going to clean it up. Nice round there from Estrada. It was a full execution from NIP. They get the bomb down with one player being dropped, but it's such a strong retake coming in, Estrada. They get the double orb set up now as well. That's going to be brought onto Cajun B. So now they really can get rolling here. Decent opportunity. They kept players alive. The full reset will be such a potential going forward. So we're investing into the round now. Double also definitely help strengthen their side. Actually, NRP going back towards five rifles here. That suggests more of a set piece coming in. They want to actually run actual tactics going into this. And they've got the early smokes as well, so potentially have something up their sleeve. Threat is called a actual strategy at the start of the round. Flash out from Freiburg as he tries to advance. This is actually good from NIP as well because they're clearing out. Okay, well, Cajun's going to deny that. It gets even better. He plays on the inside of the train. I was going to say they're clearing out that quad position where Kerrigan likes to play. It's Cajun instead that plays on the other side of it and makes it work. But now it's traded. Now Freiburg goes. Now he strikes because he has that ground to stand on. Unfortunately, he's got two left to go. It's 26 HP. Freiburg has the information. One's out toward Ivy. Gets dagged down to 11. Has to go back for the bomb as well out toward A main. And I. Not 100%. I think Device, yeah, he has eyes on it. He's can definitely see this with the AK. Mm. So Freiburg going to have to come up with something clever. Tries to go off the ladder, catch Device off, but he holds the angle. And it's interesting as well because Cajun's been playing that, that position. Kerrigan talked about how he thought he was too predictable there. And they had been switching back and forth. And there's, I mean, Cajun plays it slightly differently and it works. Yeah, Stratus completely countering that. And up here, as I said, you could see with that buy coming in, they had something up their sleeve in terms of a set piece. They went for that fast outside execution, set smokes going in very quickly, flashbangs come through, but KGB dodging them effectively and takes down three as they make their way out. Probably left on a two-on-one. They do some damage to the economy, but ultimately, Astralis do keep the double orb set up here, and we go into round number eight. It is a force buy from NIP now. Three AKs, two Tech Nines, and they'll be sending three players towards the Ivy area as well. They have got, obviously, Dupree to challenge with, but he's fully blind right now. Double wolf setup, not going to be working out too effectively here. Get right, gets the first kill. Zist coming in as well. It's a triple kill for an IP. Five on two now with this force by. They picked up the AWP and it's such a strong position now. Can Astralis find anything from this? And they are going to try and push back through Zipix. It's one low HP in front of him, nearly gets Freiburg. But it's still such a tough task as the bomb planted. And IP is so good on this outside site. They're just getting covering off these angles and clearing out most of the spots, getting so far forward in the side. Zipix gets Freiburg eventually, but Device with the AWP still has a large task to do. Exist above that Molotov, won't catch him out. He's still sitting on the bomb train, and as that AWP gets closer, it's going to be more vulnerable. They crossfire both. Wow. So two Tech-9 and three AKs, very simple strategy there. Rushing towards the Ivy area, you could see how flash Dupree was. He had to fall back, it's a triple kill to even things up from NIP, just finding frags all over the place. And that's actually detrimental to Astralis' money going forward. So we have got an interesting situation here, Matt. Device has fully invested. He had about 7K in his bank. He's invested everything into an AWP. He left himself a... And utility and armor, yeah, like so legit. It, it's fair enough. It's something that can work out when you have a player who's confident and can find frags and train and reposition themselves. Something can come from it. He's going to be towards main once again. The rest of his teammates just on pistols. This should be around going in favor of NIP unless and Device delivers some absolute godlike play. And something admirable about someone who has that confidence to say, all right, matters are in my hands, boys. I got this. Problem is, though, I mean, everyone else stays at 2K. He goes down to 900. It's going to be hard for him to uh, get his economy rolling again with the team. Only one round against them as well. They're only going to get 1,900 if they lose this one. It'll be the second. Zipix waiting at B. That looks like to be the focus right now for NIP. So they're changing it up and finally going that direction. Device not going to be about all that happy about that because he's on the A site. The good news is I guess he could just try and run out and save it. That would be the logical thing, but it's looking like Get Right and Co. will be falling back from this. Not fully committing. They want to see what the reaction is from the CTs from those initial smokes. They smoked off towards connector and lower ramp as well. Made a convincing case they were about to execute there, but just deciding to see what actually happens here. They actually didn't get much in return, so not going to be deciding to continue with this. As you mentioned, device still towards 
the outside site, so it'll be Forrest. Going by two players towards upper. This is similar to what we saw on the third round. Let's see if he can find another kill onto Zipex. Of course he can. Headshot through the train as well. That opens up the bomb site. Oh, Kerrigan tried to time it for the flank, but Freiburg just turns around. He hears him on that ladder. Get right, gets Cajun. And Device has to run. Heads for the hills, out toward Ivy, the longest possible position away from where NIP is currently occupying. Indeed. And where they haven't dropped any guns at all, no one's died, it's not like he's picked anything up. So if Device doesn't show himself any saving, they're going to think, all right, what's he got? And you think, I, I, would, I would almost guess they're going to send at least two people on the hunt. And that's going to be the case, because Dupree goes down. Where is he? There might be enough time, though. He's far enough yeah, away. They're so far away from this. Even if they begin hunting now, it takes so long to find him. I think he's going to be saving this weapon, which is good news for him, considering he spent pretty much everything he had going into round number nine here. But like you said, NIP can be five players alive. That does help build their cash accounts going into the next round. There it is. Seven place two now. Astralis. Money not fantastic, though. They have bought the orb, obviously, but it's not going to be the best of buys. You can see M4's purchased a couple of smokes, no kits yet, apart from the device, the one he saved. And there's a famous as Zipex as well. This money situation is getting pretty dire for them. We're going to round number 10. Forrest back on the AWP himself. But NIP have a very healthy lead here in the opening stages of the train. Dupree out toward Ivy, gets in the corner. He's known to play this cubby. M4 for him. Kerrigan's back in the quad position this time, but they are going to bring KGB beside him. So complete change up of the fact that the Vice as well uses the AWP up close in B, which puts Zipix back inside A. And Dupree starts it in through the smoke. He'll find Get Right. This is the lead that they need, but he's caught by the nade. Get Right calls that he hit him. He's low. He's lit, lit, lit in NA terms. And Exist gets the nade onto him. Four on four now. And up here, still tons of time to play with over a minute still, so can afford to reposition himself. They still have the utility as well. CTs haven't really reacted to this first bit coming in, but you can see Device. He's got an interesting position. The very close range AWP on the lower ramp hit. Just flirting with the idea of facing here. If he does show anything, he will be taken down by Device. It's not a shot he would actually miss at this stage. And here it comes. Oh, okay. It's pit that changes angle up. I thought he was going to go towards the upper start, where he would have been taken down. That's where Device was ready to shoot, but they know where the AWP is now. And this is probably where you will see that inside execution map. We've talked about the smokes that they all do and the Molotovs. They know the AWP is there now. Take away his vision, use the flashbangs, and with four players alive, they can still do this. So let's see how they decide to approach this one. Device is waiting, praying that they come here. They haven't played on the back of the tanker. Oh, the timing! It was an easy kill. He realizes it now does still get it. Recovery made, but ground gain from NIP and the bomb goes down. Forrest now with the AWP. He's going to stay to the high ground. Remember, he's done well in this position before when the IP went to the inner bomb site. Cajun coming from behind as well. He's come up from Pop Dog. So he's starting the pins of the tees. And Forrest is the one that has to stop this. He's ready. It's tense. Meanwhile, in the front of the site, it's a trade. Oh, Forrest realizes it late. What a shot. Does drop Cajun B. That gives him a chance. It's one versus three. And Kerrigan just gets in a position to hold it off. 13 HP. There it is. Astralis holding on there, managed to salvage AWPs as well. Forrest left in the three versus one. Does manage to take care of who's coming in the back, but wasn't enough. But the money account still strong for an IP here. They're going to have around like 8k average here across the board, so they definitely can't get the full buy. Forrest with 10. But it's going to be five AKs once again, so potentially trying that fast outside play once more. So we into round number 11. Kerrigan going to Throw a flash out through Nate as well. And this is where Freiburg's been trying to get to distill this play. This is exactly what they've done. They've tried to get Freiburg in close at this alleyway every single time so he can start to get in toward that quad position. And he's going to go again. He might actually catch out Kerrigan, who nearly gets to. He does. Just barely gets pith in time because Freiburg was always lurking on the other side of that smoke. The other side of that train. Bomb gets planted again inside the smoke. And get right finds Dupree. Which brings it back to three versus three. But the HP, it favors Astralis, as does that kill for Zipix. We have got the three on two now, but it's both orbs trying to come in for the retake. Get right towards Ivy. It's going to be challenged by Cajun B. He's only got the USP for some reason. And it's going to be actually Zipex bringing things back into their favor. Get right now. They know exactly where he is. Bomb is not planted in a great position for him. He should be taken down momentarily, surely. It's actually a decent Molotov, but it does get extinguished. So the full defuse will come in this time. Great work from Astralis. That was his only opportunity really to make something happen. Had he landed it, he would have had a chance to deny them the bomb defuse, but they smoked it themselves. So protected them. And Gerard does save the AWP, so did come into an interesting situation there, but it wasn't quite enough. Carrigan 
You talk about him in this close range main area before. This time he's there and he locks him down with a double kill. And keeps the dream alive for Astralis here. 7 4, clawing their way back into this. NIP still with the lead, still with guns. A chance to still keep the economy limited on Astralis despite avoiding the initial reset that we talked about, getting that second round in a row. But Zipix this time at B finally gets an opening kill his way. Device is going to be there to support him as well. He's going to fall further back, Device, with that AWP and try and get toward the tanker again. Yeah, first frack getting in favor of Astralis to kick things off, but NIP still heavily favoring these upper nice halls. This forest being boosted up right now, seeing if he can get a kill towards that connector area. And it's Pith that has the bomb. I give up Ivy this time, Dupree. He's gone closer to Kerrigan, who is again inside of those trains. And it is coming back toward A. 2-2 two, two split, 2 at ladder, 2 at A main. Freiburg the closest through. Pitt's already gone down that ladder. Oh, this separates them. Forrest commits to going, and Pitt falls back on side of that fire, and it's just a kill. Easily gone the way of Astralis, but Freiburg brings it back. Kerrigan gone on the close trains, gives them some space. But again, Dupree's playing a lot closer to this position, so even if they try and advance, he'll be able to shut it down, and the vice is going to shut down everything. Yeah, looking really strong now, Astralis. They're ready for whatever NIP presents them on the outside bomb site, finding frags, making sure they're in front of the smokes, and challenging with their own flashbangs as well. So decent hold from them. And I think that finally has broken the economy of NIP. They do have Forest on 5k. And I think it'll be the partial buy coming in. So get the Tech Nines out. Forest can justify an AK. And he keeps himself about $2,400. But they have got a Molotov and a flashbang. No smokes purchased so far. So just hoping Forest will be able to do something with the weapon. So they'll be focusing towards the inside site once again. Exist in the charge here. But they have had some problems here. As the Zipex have found the opening frag last round. And looking like he wants to do similar sort of results this time. Flash out, Zipix was. Time to shoulder peek correctly, not facing it, but when he goes back out, dinked up, Device saves him. Best friends, those two, apparently, and Device, well, he's out of favor now because that's three men down in his hands, and a very low HP of Zipix stays alive. Six HP at that. Kerrigan's gonna go ahead and take down Forrest and Device to close it. They're back within one. Yeah, very nice round there from Device. He rotates him perfectly. Zipix with a devastating grenade as they came in the lower ramp as well. It was only a partial buy from NIP, but didn't get a plan down whatsoever. Got completely wrecked as it came down the lower ramp. And that double orb set up back out for Astralis now. NIP with the full buy. They have got five AKs and a decent amount of utility as well. We'll see what Astralis... This is the round I'd start saying to start mixing things up. Maybe send device towards the upper ramp. Go for maybe an aggressive Ivy play. Astralis have been quite passive in terms of their approach to each round. Just waiting for NIP to make the next move. But once again, Zipex up close to the lower ramp. Great series we've got shaping up. Indeed. Coming to a fine finish as well. Seven to six in favor of NIP. Round 14, both teams have guns. And it's NIP that's more fragile for the 15th round if they lose this one. All well, five players have made their way towards the upper halls inside here. You mentioned they did favor. This is the, the execute coming in. They've got all five committed. Everyone's got smokes and Molotovs. You see them all lining up for it. We've seen this many times online. See how effective it's going to be on land. Zipix waiting to hold this. He puts the flames very intentionally on the inside of the smoke, so when they go through, they have to take damage inevitably. It's quite a clever tactic. It works out. Zipix pops up late, takes down two, bomb included. So no plant coming in just yet. Device gets a good shot. That'll deny it further. They may just get this from Freiburg. So $800 extra injection in the next round, but that's all they're going to get. It's four rounds accumulated as well. This will be the fifth, so it's max loss bonus plus bomb plant. They're just going to be able to force. A little bit too obvious there from NIP. They haven't shown any presence anywhere else in the map. I think anyone who's watched their demos has realized that that's a tactic they often run, and they just went straight towards the inside platform and a little bit of a desperation play almost because they did all the smokes over. And as you can see, as soon as Astralis saw the first smoke come in, they drop a smoke on lower ramp and then a Molotov in front of that as well. It completely wrecks them as they come down. They're losing so much HP. Device gets loads of damage spraying in as they make their way to the bomb site, and it's just a real bloodbath for the NIP as they make their way to the side. So Astralis tie things up here at 7 7. We're going to the final round, as you said. NIP a little bit more fragile here. No orbs. They've got five rifles. And that's actually maximum loss bonus achieved. Astralis with five rounds in a row now. After actually going down 5 0, they still have the potential to win the half here. Dupree does get spotted up, shoulder peeking, but that was his objective. Looked like he actually took bullet damage there, but 
It all hit the wall in front of him. Device gets pith. So swift actions on B as he gets up toward the corner and actually wins that duel. He can fall back now. The aggression, though, is still going to force onto Kerrigan as Dupree get Molotov down. He goes passive at hell. And they're going to go for this VP-esque style smoke. They actually aren't going to commit to pushing around and wrapping toward Kerrigan. They're just going to leave Get right there and hope that he'll go unnoticed in that position. It's actually reasonable because if Kerrigan gets up and gets too complacent, he'll be a sitting duck with Get right that close. He'll just pop out, swing, and take the shot. Horse through the smoke, tries to go towards Zed Connector, but it's actually Zipix that gets the kill on Freiburg. You can see what a great read Amstralis has got on this. Actually just leaving Zipix, who normally plays that inside area. They had all five players still on the A side at one point. Device now has rotated back, and Zipix will be joining him as well. They want to have Device to the AWP in that connector area. Zipex making his way towards the inside ramp. And now NIP, five on three. They have got one smoke remaining, trying to get a pick here anywhere they can. It's going to be Get Right coming out towards Ivy, locked down by KGB. That's going to be the round over this stage. 20 seconds remain. Easy kill for Dupree in main entrance. And there it is. Device gets the final frag. And as, after going 5 0 down to open things up, it looks so successful for NIP. It's Astralis to come back and win the half. Some really strong play. Once they got that double orb set up running, that's when it started going heavily in their favor. Yep. Yeah, big time. I mean, they massive comeback mounted in the half. Remember, they were 7-2 down at a point. They finished at 8-7. Massive game from Device as well. Once again, 15 for 6 for him. All done to him. Change of position with every single yeah. round. Reading the game very well, making sure he's in the right place at the right time. It seemed like they didn't really have an answer for him after those initial five rounds. And it's Pitt, the player who's been fantastic on cash. He's had a very quiet game here. Four for 10. Seems like he was a little bit. And and credit where credit is due, Cajun B and Kerrigan, together it's eight and 11 kills respectively, but they were very busy on that outer site and they were getting trades that were sufficient in many situations, more so because Dupree, ooh, little sound cut. More so because Dupree. Hello? I'm, I'm, I don't know what's going on. I Maybe I've got okay. a faulty don't, cable. Don't panic. I won't, everything's gonna be fine. No, I was gonna say though, because Dupree was getting really overwhelmed out toward Ivy. So they had to not only cover their own ground, but oftentimes be in a position to help support him. So very busy, but again, the trades were favorable. Well, let's get into the second half then. Astralis switching over to the T side, NIP on the CTs. It's gonna be 8-7 going into the second half. And we'll have a look at the buys coming for Astralis here. Forces of armor and a smoke and a flashbang on towards Carrigan. Similar scenes for NIP. There's a little Freiburg on the smoke and diffuse kit. So. Let's see where they decide to go. So we'll be splitting up the map for now for Astralis. Two players towards Ivy, two towards inside, waiting for any sort of CT push coming in. The bombs is waiting in T-spawn. Trying to get intel here. No specific plan coming into place just yet. I'm gonna try and push the CTs back and make sure they don't gain any information by pushing towards Ivy or the inside area. Those are key positions to actually gather information as a CT. And they'll probably be just biding their time here, running the clock down as working out what's going on. Cajun being device. About to face off with Exist and Pith. Exist spots them right away with that USP. A couple taps out that direction. Might have been Morse code for fallback because Astralis are certainly reading it. I know Anders is a Morse code specialty. Specialist, excuse me. Only in certain words. But now it is going to be over toward the B side. Get right's playing extremely passively toward that Z connector. Oh, this is the smoke coming in. It's going to be Carrigan throwing it down the mid lanes of the inside bomb site. Flashbang will come in and they'll swarm one, trying to get the bomb down any way they can. Happy to challenge towards Connector and they'll be crossing over. This is actually quite impressive. They'll be pushing down very aggressive towards inside, trying to take over the CTs and the very open plant coming in as well. That's what that smoke's for. And actually, will be pushing down and get the headshot on towards Get Right. Bomb planted as well on this. There we go. Get Right on six. HP, you're dead right. It's on the corner of the bomb train. It's a good shot from Cajun. He's going to take down Forrest. And Dupree, he's pushed so far up that we often talk about this in the B site. If the farther forward you can fight away from the bomb, the harder it is to save time for the defuse. And Dupree is going to pick up a kill, stay alive as well. He gets the assist for one on Zipix. And Zipix is going to follow up with his own onto Freiburg completely on his own. As his exist will finally get Dupree. That's again, how far forward are they? They just follow up in Dupree's footsteps. Yeah, that's a really nice round from Astralis there. Pushing the CTs back, checking towards IV, checking towards inside, making sure there's no aggression coming in, making the CTs wait on the bomb sites there. They smoke down the mid track at the inside bomb site, and they're willing to take the aim duels at the start. As soon as the CT stops facing, they're going very aggressive, and that's a very key point when you're planting towards the inside site. The fact they get that nice open plant down as well, that's so beneficial for them. They do find those initial frags, and they've got their players pushed down towards the back to near the connector. They can actually turn around and still be beneficial to their team and stop the bomb being diffused. So that's actually a really cool play from Astralis. And they go up 9-7 here. NIP will be forcing into this round, but only three players. With the HG's coming in. Exist to open things up, but Frax being exchanged now. Cajun B finding pit. 
Freiburg still with this Deagle. They've got the man advantage as Forrest gets Cajun. It's going to be better than that because Get Right comes down late with the CZ75. And it's just down to two players remaining. Bomb not yet planted. And it's stuck inside the site. It's on Zippix back right now. But he's separate from his teammate inside beyond the ladder. And finally carrying it to the position where they can spot each other up and work off each other. But another flank coming in. Because Get Right's gone all the way out the hallways. And he's potentially going to try and get on the stairs, get in behind them. Zippix thankfully gets Exist. And now it's low HP. Now they should be able to close this out. I don't know where Get Right is. Well, I think Carrigan just spotted him. So they're going to be opting out of this. Carrigan is getting a better position here. Let's get right, just have the CZ in hand and 48 HP. Should be a matter of time before he's taken down. It's close. Carrigan goes on the 5 HP, but does find the kill. And they take the second round force by away from NIP. And they'll be going to this with a full eco. Astralis did double figures now. 10-7. And he did everything they could. They found three kills, but not meant to be that time. So now NIP can't really justify much more. And maybe a couple of flashbangs of P50s. Actually, you can only have one of those on towards Forest. Just run number 18. Forest back in towards the site again. The smoke's off on it already, but it's not going to be a commitment. It's going to be toward Get Right. If you can find the first shot, that's do damage. Dink on the device, follows it up. Second headshot. But it was only really going to be a matter of time. Barring any miracles, if he had pulled that off 1v5 as they rushed into it. Remember before, rather, it would have been insane. Another bomb plant coming in now. And again, Forest by round two. Not much they can do, NIP, in terms of buying, but they're still finding decent damage. Forest getting that shot on... Zipix, they've actually gotten closer in this round than they were in the pistol. Exist is going to follow it up. Flash on the carry, and he's vulnerable. Oh. And Cajun B's gone. What is going on? Astral is just falling apart. They're already on top of this defuse. No one holding it just yet. They don't have the kit, but they're going to force up the carry. And 14 HP has to face against three, and they've done it. NIP with no buy. Pull out a round. What is that round? One P250, four USPs, and somehow they're coming out on top with four players alive? I don't even know what to tell you what happened there. That's insane. How have Astralis let that happen? They go towards the inside side. A lot of crossfires coming in. And you can see the look on their face. They're wondering what in God's name just happened. A P250. It's all the NIP purchased that round. That's insane. And now it's Astralis on the back foot in terms of the money. Once again, we can see Device has brought the AWP to the party. He's got that. And Zipex with the Galil. And they are being joined now with the Tech Nine of Cajun B. So this is a big round for both teams in terms of the economy. We're going to round number 19. It's looking like a fast play towards the outside bomb site. Dupree leading the charge here, trying to go aggressive, but his pit with the AWP takes him down. A lot of damage being oh. given towards the terrorists as well. Forrest with the MAC 10 finds device. You can hear an IP, they know what that kill means. Another one with that MAC 10. <laughs> and they're getting pumped. <laughs> and the magicians are making noise with their magic tricks because Cajun B left in a one versus five. All right, nice, nice try as a strong makes one. Back as Cajun gets the kill onto Freiburg, but he's well, thankfully thanks. picked up the op from Device. Every kill they're getting is like some sort of uh, girl scream coming from over the NFP side, but I like it. They seem pumped. Why not? Well then, Cajun B now. <laughs> Four on one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just like, I'm, be I'm quiet pretty enough. sure, like. Just to give you guys an idea at home, if you can hear them through our mics, I'm pretty sure you can. They're about 60 to 80 feet away behind yeah. three sets of curtains from us. And that's how loud they are. They're close to each other, though. Like, right now, based on that camera angle, if you were going to go basically, they sit sort of, sort of diagonal to each other across, but then down one booth. So they're yes. kind of 180 behind that camera. Is where Nips sat in comparison to Astralis. Just to reiterate, what a round for Astralis to lose. After looking so strong in that first half and coming back, winning the pistol up against four USPs and a PT-50. And then this that around that force by not really working out for them. They now want to fully to themselves. It's going to tie things up at 10-10. They end up losing this. They've got to go back and think, what the hell happened that round? Such a massive flaw in the plan. But we're going to round 20 now. They're going to have a PT-50 and four blocks themselves. Can they replicate the same magic map? What do you think? Maybe? I, I don't, I don't know. I'm normally the same positive line. guy, but this is... <laughs> This is a stretch, Henry. Okay. And it means Nip's going to sit on 10-10 if that's the case. I think you might be absolutely right there. Pitt is towards Ivy right now. Gets, well, let's say get the first pick. I think he just tagged him through the server there. That's going to be exist to get the kill. And Pitt does fun. The kill with the second shot. Five on three now. Carrigan trying to get towards the inside side. He has got the bomb. But they are going to be aware. Just going for the desperate plan there. Surely not going to get it. Swinging his mouse around wildly. Uh, there we go. Now we got. Okay, all right. So it's not just the NIP players. Right, it's that's the NIP. That's good. That's good to say. Make did more say sense. it sounded like a girl. That, yes. that makes sense now, Henry. Okay. No, they do have the. A lot of, obviously, we're in Sweden, so a lot of the NIP right. representatives here. We saw Heat. That makes more sense. Sitting there as well. 
I thought I was fighting. Actually, I, I wouldn't be surprised if it was Heaton that's screaming like a girl. That's true as well. He looks like he's got that kind of scream. Device, though, they are back onto rifles, but it's only five AKs. Let's try and get a fast play into this, but again, the push. Look at the beep stance right now. Get right using a smoke is already up on top of the ramp, playing in the B hallways, and he's got just up like, on the edge of that railing so he can see above this. Zipic's not showing, not facing just yet, thankfully, but good positioning, good information early on. The question is to get right, get much from that. He's going to be falling back at this stage. Astralis will be looking to take over the upper halls here. Dupree first. And we can see actually Pit has pushed the Ivy area as well, but the thing is, Cajun B just waiting for him. He does like to lurk towards this area. Cajun B being so patient here. Who's did a crack first? Both players committing to holding this. Pit with the AWP is looking towards T spawn. I don't think he anticipates Cajun to be here. This is, I mean, get right pushes, doesn't see anyone. Now, thankfully, they've got the re because utility was deployed at, at B, but Pith pushes out and then says, all right, let's see what I can get. <laughs> he doesn't yes. see anyone, but he's still in danger right now. But Meanwhile, though, Astralis, they are slowing it down considerably. If we just jump to Pith's screen quickly, you can see, even if he does face at this point, he's ready for that face from Cajun. So he's watching towards T-spawn. Oh, it's and gonna this is exactly what I'm talking about. See, ready for it. So that's actually a very nice play from him. That's Pith screaming, as you can hear. Pith or Heat in one of the two. Yeah. But now Astralis need to compensate for this. Find a way back in and it's going to get shut down. Exist. Bottom of the ramp inside of B. Finds it through the smoke. And that'll change Astralis again. Forest inside of the E-Box. Hits the shot of the bomb. Dropped. 24 seconds to play. Finally, Device gets one kill back. Zipix follows it up. There's a chance. He's missed the spray. It looks awkward for Exist. Finally, they close it out. Freiburg. King of Banana. King of Spray Control. Able to close it down. Drops the bomb again. And Device left in... A one versus three. Needs to die now if he's going to. Gets the first shot. There's actually a chance at this point. Oh. Get right shuts it. That could have got really awkward there. Get right had gone down. There was a chance, but time was running out. So there it is. NIP take the advantage back here. 11 10. And Astralis once again cannot buy. You can hear Freiburg giving it some. The mind games begin. Have we seen a pause from Astralis yet? I don't think we have in this game, no. Probably time to probably. Yeah, calm down I would round. consider it absolutely. As uh, that's actually going to be four rounds in a row now, and some of those have been very difficult circumstances. We're going to run another 22. It's going to be Tech Nines and P250s for Astralis. Smoke have been purchased, so they could go for a full execute in terms of wall of smokes outside, try and get the bomb down just to boost the money and go into the next one. They have a very low chance of winning the round, but a plant is actually pretty probable. Three on top of the dumpster, setting for the set. Smokes on to A. Zipix, the only one not in that position. He's actually going to go out from the ladder and now it comes four into the site all at once. The fifth just joining him behind, but Forrest waits. He's tried to make this work in his favor by letting them run by. Initially, he does get the kill and gets away. And the bomb's been dropped. This is NIP's round. It's done. It's going to go to 12 for them. Yeah, so as we saw, Astralis setting up there, just trying to get the bomb down anywhere they could, but NIP pushing through the smokes and getting on top of them, denying it. But Astralis still have plenty of cash going into this one, so now on the back foot, now up against the ropes device, back on towards AWP. But uh, as we said before, we weren't sure whether it was going to be Forrest or Pit. It seems like Forrest is going on the T side. He's happy to do the AWP in there. And when we get onto CT, that's when Pit is taking over. That happened on Inferno. It seems like the similar scenes here on train as well. Just smoke out a little bit late. It almost left an open opportunity for device to get to that corner. But you say a little bit later, it actually almost works out to be perfect timing, so you can take your pick depending on what you think it is for exist. Either way, it shuts them down. Bomb intentionally dropped at the top of ladder right now for Astralis, so they can try and work these positions, find a pick and make it work in their favor, but exist is actually going to give up with that early smoke dropped out. He's going to give up that Ivy position, go over to a more support play where he can cover off for Pith, give that positioning to Astralis, because when they're that far down, if they commit, if they can find the kills, it's very hard to trade back. Forest, he has pushed into main entrance here. So Carrion will be waiting for him on the dumpster, but they're smoking them out for now. So that's a lot of intel taken away from the T's. They've got to be holding up and not really sure what Forest will be doing with it. So they'll be opting to try and push towards Ivy at this stage. Exist ready for them as well. Check the flashbang in to slow them down. This occasion being device looking for that next pick. Device is with the AWP as well. Flashbang comes in, fully captured exist. Next frag's gonna be a massive one. It's him to capitalize. Dupree coming in to find Forest in that main entrance, but get right, gets him back. Pith still has the lineup. He knows he spots one more. Goes for the wall shot just in hopes as he falls away, but it's get right late. On to Device. Kerrigan's got to pull this back. Manages to find Pith. There's two up toward that Ivy position. They spotted one at least. Double Molotov in to try and force this up on the ladder. They go, but Kerrigan doesn't find the shot. And get right. He's got Zipix down. It's all on a Kerrigan. 16 HP. Shot on the get right. Bomb still dropped. 
And he's gonna try and advance low HP on Exist, but he spots him up. That's gonna give Freiburg the position. Bates this out, low HP player gone. And Kerrigan, he's gonna try and work this. Nine seconds has to plant this, and Freiburg just needs to stay alive. Just not face this, and Astralis, they have oh. to force the issue. Freiburg gets the shot. That was pretty tense. That three on one with Carrigan with some very small fake plants there. Just baiting CTs to face him. He gets the first kill, brings it into a one on one. And Freiburg doing just enough to set the land. One bullet there would have been really depressing for him if he had dropped that round. But he manages to hold strong and looks like get right. Really coming to life here. It was existed, open things up. Fully flashed from Ivy area. Managed to find the first couple of frags and just working together as a real tight unit there. NIP find the 13th round. Now Astralis will take that pause. They have lost, what, six rounds in a row now. It might, it might be another tactical from NIP because apparently they're going to the bathroom, Henry. No, it, it is Astralis that call this. I saw Pip just run up and run away from his chair. So. As did Forrest, so... Oh, yeah. actually, I'm seeing them sp sp there sprint they go. to the bathroom. Run, boys. Run. Get right as well. All of them going. They're sick of losing their timeout. So they're like, really? all right, you charged us a timeout last game. Let's see how long our bladder can hold this They've time. They've all just run into the bathroom. They've got 80 <laughs> seconds here. I know those cubicles are always full as well. So they're going to they're gonna be, they're gonna be rushing another one coming in late. This is a new tactic. <laughs> <laughs> this, the bathroom stack. The A bathroom rush. That's quite a rush. That's actually like 50 meters away from the tables. This could be interesting. What is this? Extremely far. I don't know. Producer Nick having some fun, but... I don't know what he wants. It's a free bathroom break for an MP. Like I say, they don't have to get charged to timeout this time. Well, here we go then. We have got 60 seconds, a one-minute countdown has begun. But Astralis now, they do have plenty of cash mats, so we will be going to the next round with the Vice near WP. Three rifles so far in terms of firepower. Cajun B of AK-47, Carrigan and the Galil. Zipex does have cash. We have 45 seconds. And you can see Freiburg waiting nervously while his teammates make it back from the bathroom in time. No one has exited the bathroom yet. We've got a clean line of sight, Matt. I'd like you to cast it as they're running back. Yeah, we've got a crossfire set as well, Henry. Yeah, we actually have. I'm totally letting you be the bit. I see NBK emerging I, from that direction. I can try and get so a picture as they run back. Getting involved in this. Get Right's rushing out. Go. They've already cleared the site, so obviously the bathroom's cleared out. Falling back. Tactical retreat. Probably just going to save the guns while that bomb explodes because I heard it was a dirty bomb late in that bathroom. Let me just tell you that much. Get Right. That's two of them. We still have, we're missing two players. 15 seconds. Timer ticking down oh, now. Here we go. It's there Forest. it comes. The last player. It's Forrest. Not Making the... his way. He can do it. He's going to make it. See, a little bit of a cheer. Two seconds. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they've had to take a timeout. They haven't made it. <laughs> they didn't make it in time. <laughs> they they've actually... had to take their own timeout. There they are, boys. <laughs> they actually did have to call their timeout. <laughs> This is too good. All right. Either way, they're the ones in the driving seat. They can be stress-free. It's Astralis that still are the ones behind right now. 13-10. Our scoreline. We'll see if that timeout actually haunts NIP because if Astralis starts to mount a comeback in NIP, it could be daunting for them. Well, the key thing about Counter-Strike, man, is you need to stay hydrated while playing. So a lot of players will be guzzling down water and Monster Energy, of course, as you can see on the desk of Forest. But at this point, they have taken their tactical pause. It was for the toilet break. They might as well use the time now to discuss what they're going to do and see how they're going to approach this next round. They probably know the money for situation is for Astralis. I was getting bomb plants down and six loss bonus, or well, five stage loss bonus, of course. They do have cash. But Astralis, in terms of the utilities, not massive. They have got five smokes, but not a single Molotov. And they have got one minute to wait until we get back into this one. There's Threat, the coach, of course. He gets to sit on the server with them, for anyone who's not familiar. That's why he's on a PC. He gets to have an overview of exactly what's going on, sees the timings, and has a direct communication to the team as well. I thought he was just browsing Reddit on that PC. He does that as well. No, Threat is definitely hands-on. There's the counterpart to it on the Astralis side, Zonic, who's a little bit less vocal during games, uh, he's, but definitely does more of an analytical role with he's them. Exactly. Like, so Carrigan still is the in-game leader. Threat, on the other hand, he's the one actually telling, calling the shots and telling them exactly what to do. Zonic. He is like an analyst, like you said. He can give suggestions. He won't be calling mid-round or anything like that. And he can kind of give predictions and try and calculate the money and all that sort of stuff. So still very beneficial, but a different style. Here we go, then. We are back into this. 13-10, Astralis, a big round ahead of them. They have fully invested into this. Going to come down to the device in his AWP. He had a great first half. A few blunders in the second have meant they found themselves a huge disadvantage here. NIP two rounds away from series points. As we're going to round number 24 here, we are back. So the Group C decider match going down to the wire. Danish, Swedish rivalry. As close as we could be to each country sitting here in Malmö. Forest. 
playing on the off angle in front of the bomb train with the smoke out toward ladder so he doesn't need to worry about both sides of it. Pressure's on Astralis. Device back to the AWP. Kerrigan as well. He's gone for the Galil and no armor. And it's going to be Device, though, that starts it. So the AWP working for Device. Pitfalls. No smokes out this time. Forrest playing on the bomb train as he falls back after that smoke dissolves at the ladder room. Just to try and see above smokes on execution. And it's Get Right to play solo right now on the B site. Indeed. Man, advantage for Astralis, and they have plenty of time to play as well. Bomb will be making his way through. The hall's now looking like an inside play coming in from Astralis here. They have got one player towards main entrance. That'll be Cajun B. He's watching the flanks. is lurking. Seeing if he can catch any CTs out of position here. But Astralis presumably will be sending their AWPer down towards the lower ramp to look for that next pick. They have killed Pitt. Here's the AWPer. Here comes Device. Smoking off. Oh, actually get right using his incendiary there. So he throws that just before the smoke is thrown. So that doesn't actually matter too much to Astralis at this point. As they will be going in now. Smoke is deployed. We're going for Look execution this, right now. Look at this from Forrest. This is so good. He's so quiet. Trigger discipline. Oh, he misses it. They, they don't turn around. Where's the communication? He's still got a chance with the pistol, but he doesn't hit any of the shots. The vice gets it. You would have thought Forrest had it, but Freiburg's going to follow in his footsteps. He takes advantage of the situation. They're still down a man. But Astral is so low on HP. And Cajun B now is going to try and reverse this out. Zipix doesn't turn around because Cajun never makes the call. He wasn't in position fast enough. They're going to try and hold this as well. Cajun's got to force this down. He's just going to deny it in time, but they're both low on HP. But they do get the kill. Oh, Dupree holds wow. it. And Forrest, my God, you had to hit those. It's very rare for him to miss opportunities like that. That's his bread and butter normally. Easy shot in the back. Another platform. I'm sure we're going to see this right now. That's a shot he should be hitting all day long. Obviously, the terror is just moving just out of his crosser just in time, but still, he had enough time to go for the full spray. Well, what a shot from Device to take, down, take him down in the end. Well, there it is then. Astralis do arrive after six-round deficit. They bounce back here. And now we have got an adjustment in terms of the approach here from NIPs. Get right on the auto-sniper. You said he loved it, it Matt. Yep. Let's see whether he can roll back the years and show us what he's made of. Pith has the op still to complement that auto sniper from get right, which is going to play at the Z connector, so he's going to actually try and swing it onto either side. Device trying to get some shots through the wall if anyone's pushing up after that smoke that's deployed. He's correcting, guessing someone has, but he can't find the angle on the forest. They're staying in a very standard position so far. They are going to be having forest though. He's pushed all the way in towards A main. Looking like Astralis will be favoring towards the Ivy area once again. This was the one that capitalized before. This rotation from Pith is actually quite good for that. But he's going to want to face this, and you know that the time that Astralis have remaining here, they're going to be waiting. They can they can buy their time a little bit. They can work this slowly. Oh, Device has the See? angle held with the op. Yeah. Who's it going to be first? Two players here. It's Pith, who finds Kerrigan. Device on top of the dumpsters. Can't get the refrag on that. Pith falls away fast. And like you say, 30 seconds left. They pretty much have to go, so it's Dupree and Zipix that have to open this up. Good flash. Well read from NIP. And the auto sniper, now it comes into play. Get right finds one. Exist still close to this position. Smoke out left. They want to attack right. Cajun makes it work. And Forrest has to rotate back in the side. He still has occupations out toward E Box, but Forrest, he finds the kills this time. No inaccuracy. And it's Device and Cajun B with 12 seconds. And they're just going to bail. They're just yeah. going to get out of there. There's no chance of winning that round. Really nice work there from Pit just to open things up and throw a cat among the pigeons. They see the Astralis just had to react, tried to come out. And that auto sniper, like he said, just in a perfect position there. Astralis didn't have any time to deploy any smokes. He finds the kill, locks him down. and. NIP find their 14th round here. One more to go until series point, but Device does save the AWP. That's pretty massive considering they just have been fully reset here. So they have got an AWP and an AK-47, but they're not going to be fully investing. This, yes, they will, but it's just like very little to work with. You can see three pistols, an AK, and an AWP. Device, you need to step up massively here. If they were to lose this round, it's $1,900, and that's pretty much game. And of the seven rounds, that NIP won out of the last eight. Only one has had a bomb plant. That was the furthest one away. That was eight rounds ago. Yeah. Aside from the one they won, of course, they did get a bomb plant in that, but still, it just goes to show you that NIP is shutting them down before Astralis can even get near the, the sites. Have to reiterate, if Astralis loses round, that's pretty much it, It's easy. done, yeah. Absolutely. Just so they've hit the pressure on here. There's really got two weapons to work with, and NIP with that auto sniper and AWP as well, holding back pretty defensively. Vice taking quite a lot of damage there with the incendiary. He goes on 68. Trying to find a cheeky pick there to kick things off. Wasn't meant to be. 
Yes. And exist with a crossfire set out toward Ivy. Forced A train again. Get right. Z connector, Freiburg B. Straightforward. Straightforward positioning from NIP. The difference is on the Astrala side where they start to group up for what looks to be a 3 2 split out A main and ladder onto the outer site. Pressure's on Astralis right now. As you say, it's do or die. First player jumps, tries to reset the game a pit. Doesn't land the second one as well because he gets above. He uses the pallet to get across, but repeaks Kerrigan down at quad. Getting close though, he's scoped in. Doesn't spot Cajun. So refrag, Forrest gonna be limited by this small drive. Tries to stick around and catch the kill between the two trains, but the bomb play coming in needs to be saved. Astralis just barely as Zipix comes back out and catches them pushing through. And that will allow it to go down. So finally Astralis do get a plant. Get right still as the auto sniper. See if it pays off or not. No one gonna peek. Astralis, they can't. Hold your breath. See if the Danes can fight a way back in. Cajun gets get right. It's all down to Freiburg. Who's on nine HP. So despite getting the first kill, he's gone. That was an NIP's opportunity there just to take the game. Such a huge advantage in terms of the buy up there. But it's Astralis coming up trumps. Cajun B lurks towards that IV area and actually finds two frags there to kick things off. It's actually Pitt who got the first frag there. We thought NIP had that one tied up. The Vice Fan of Frag and Zipex to finish things off. Freiburg will be trying to save his M4 here. But this one's not over just yet. They managed to pick up some remaining kills as well and get the rifles. So Zipex and Cajun B going in and be able to drop some weapons here. So all of a sudden now, Astralis coming back to life. You can see the money in the NRP camp. It's not fantastic. Exist on two grand. And the pit was very low as well, but they're going to be adjusting and distributing their wealth, making sure he has the AWP. So this could be a, a similar storyline here. Astralis were to win this round. That's a pretty hard reset for NIP. And it could take Astralis all the way to 15. Get right's going to face this. That smoke again. He's going to try and get on the ledge, but Astralis read it. So both times he's tried to do this, this time with a shotgun as well, so it doesn't have the range advantage. Device goes, oh, all right. He pushes through. Get right doesn't fall off on that first shot. Takes Zipix. I was going to say, they read it well. They saw that smoke. They fell back. They knew, all right, get right. Very likely to push into this, but he still mm. makes that work. He got away as well. Didn't take any damage for his troubles. He finds the first pick on towards Zipex, and that's a massive play from him. Had he had died, that could have been the round over, but it makes it work. And now Device trying to come back in, find the next kill. They are taking over the upper platforms with the AWP. Now we'll be facing that. There are two players for an IP towards the side. It's been a long, long time since Astralis went out in a group stage. But these two juggernauts head to head, one of them's got to go. Man down, Astralis trying to get inside of the site. Get right still here with the shotgun, but Cajun able to get it correctly as Get right can't land it, but look at Freiburg lining up at least one on Cajun, oh. re-peaked by Kerrigan. Waits for him to plead his ammo. And Pith gets the refrag, but Bomb goes down. Still the man advantage for NIP. Smokes out on sidewalk, trying to get Device into a better position. Slight gap holds it, hits the shot as well. Forrest gone. Back to the two versus two. No kits either on the NIP camp. And Exist gonna try and advance. Good pick though by Pith. Kerrigan down, it leaves it to Device. High ground gained. But they're gonna know this, they're gonna check this. And they picked up a Molotov. Oh, Pith, that's so big. Yeah. But he puts it lower. He actually puts it lower, which means Device still has a chance at this. I'm not sure why he'd throw it towards the lower round, but here we go. Then it's gonna be Device coming into the face. The defuse comes in. Needs to go. It's a kid, he doesn't even face it. Oh, Device misreads it altogether. Hmm. You'd think he'd at least face to give it a chance. Why would he not? Uh, NIP finding that very easy to finish that one off. They actually hit series point now. And I guess it was Device taking a huge gamble, hoping they were faking that, and he could have come out and got the reface when the second fake defuse came in, but it wasn't meant to be there. Big round as it as Get Right to open things up, and it looked like Astralis had some footing back into it, but I'm device... actually just curious as it crossed my mind. When they threw that flash, Pitt's gonna start this off, so could be good here, but when they threw that flash, I'm wondering if that's when he tapped it, and Device didn't even hear them get on it. Potentially. I'd like to see the replay of that, and production says that that is the truth. So that flash was perfectly timed to allow the plant pretty, to come in. That's pretty next so level. clever from NIP. And that's why Device doesn't face it at all. He had absolutely no idea. That is sick. And it's a one-man advantage. NIP about to send Astralis packing. It's four AKs, the AWP for Cajun. Get right has the shotgun again. Gonna be up close to this ladder position. If he peeks out now, it's Dupree dead. Headshot, and he fades away. They can't get the refry. Kerrigan tries. Oh. All that serves to do is tell Get Right. He's there. Finally, Cajun comes out, but it's down to two players for Astralis. And exists holding the angle on top of Green. He's gonna get at least the information that the second player is coming out with that AWP from A main. 
And IP just have to hold their ground. Two man advantage, make it now three. It's down to Cajun B. One versus four. And NIP about to send the fourth of the top teams in this tournament home. They'll do it. Forrest closes it out. NIP move on in Sweden. And you can head back across the bridge, Denmark. Fantastic stuff from them there. NIP win this series 2-1. And you have to say, Matt, I said if Astralis ended up losing this game, it goes to that one round in the second half. If you remember, four USPs and a PT-50 just so that they just negated the full Force bite from NIP, which actually led to a six round deficit as well. Key moments like that are going to lose you games, and I think they'll go back and watch that one of trepidation because it's a bit of a haunting round, I have to say. So sick with that flash, too, because the device is sitting waiting. One of the diffusing, one of the diff. Man, oh man. Oh, hi. <sighs> get, I mean, look, Get Right plays extremely well again in that game, plays the B site on his own super, super well, but. Everyone steps up. Pith has the best series I've seen him on NIP yet. By far, justifies his place on this team. And they look so much more structured than I've ever seen them in a long time. It's interesting now they've kind of defined the roles quite clearly now. We can see it's Forrest on the T side. He's working the picks with the AWP. And now on the CT side, Pith's actually very effective all for then. He's actually working that very nicely. Knows his timings well, retaking with the AWP. Finding his picks towards Ivy as well. That was actually a pretty cool play from him. And you can see NIP, I really do think it comes down to that, that third round from Astralis. That's when they really were starting to build up momentum after coming back after that 5-0 deficit in the first half. They actually looked like they were kind of firing all cylinders. That's when Device really started to show up, and then they just lost all their steam at that point. But it's going to be NIP going through, and we have to say goodbye to Astralis. Bye to Astralis, and Dignitas top the group as well, so they might be a bit happy about that. They represent the Danish flag. Smix standing by. It's Astralis gone, but NIP are through. Thank you very much, Sadikis. For the first time, Astralis is not in the top eight of a major tournament, and now, NIP, you guys are in the top eight through to the quarterfinals. What are your initial thoughts? Um, of course, a really good feeling. I mean, we've only played in front of a big crowd in Sweden like once and or like twice, and it's been on DreamHack in Gen Shopping. We missed out on the DreamHack Open in Stockholm, and uh, finally we get to play here in front of a big crowd tomorrow or Saturday. So it's going to be very, very, very nice. Well, the first map was on Cash, and I think this week and prior as well, you guys have proven that you are an amazing team on Cash. So let's move forward with Inferno and Train. Now, statistically speaking, on paper, Astralis does have a better record on those maps this year. However, in terms of that final map on Train, you guys, I mean, you, wouldn't, you would never have known that statistically. So in terms of just the game plan and everything like that, explain to us what was the preparation like. Um, on Train, we had a pretty good preparation I would say. We had like an idea on what they would do as T and we just tried to like counter it, like find weak spots in your tactics and like abuse that a lot. And I think we did very well as CT. Seven rounds as T is always good and losing a pistol. I think we lost a pistol as a T as well. So um, yeah, I mean, our, I think our train is very strong. Our, Infer our Inferno, however, it's been like 50-50. It could be like Either we have like a very good lockdown on CT, or we have like very good T side. Now we, now we didn't have like, I don't know, we just didn't really feel the flow on Inferno. They, have, they are very good on Inferno's T. Like we don't really know what they're doing when they're coming, so. But uh, I think overall, I think we are super happy about, I mean, beating them. They're a very strong team, of course, so big props to them as well. Now, NIP in general, especially since Threat has joined, you guys just look completely revamped, looking really, really good. And it especially shows in your ESL Pro League rankings. You're currently ranked number one over teams like Fnatic, Na'Vi, VP, et cetera, et cetera. So in terms of that, can you go into a little bit more detail about the effect that Threat has had and what sort of changes that he's been implementing specifically? Sure. I mean, he's the in-game leader of the team. He prepares all our attacks. Like, you know, when he joined the team, we already had, like, stress that we've had for a very long time. Uh, but when he said, like, he just wanted a clean slate, when he, when he joined in, it was like, skip everything that you've done before. I'm going to do everything now. <laughs> so it was like, okay, Threat's word is law, right? <laughs> so we just listened to him. We, uh, it was pretty hard in the start, just trying to, like, he says back off, and we look, why? Like, <laughs> all right? But we did. I mean, we listened to him. We have full faith in him, and he's a very smart, he's one of the smartest players I know. Uh, so we're super happy to have him on our team. He changed all strats, like, he's building strats, and I think we're doing a lot of new stuff as well. That's what I like about CS. Like, we don't, we don't really have those tags that teams always use. We, we come up with new things as well. And I think he's very good at that. So uh, he's very tactical, making us play as a team also a lot. Don't really rely on our aim all the time. We have strats to fall back on if we, if we don't hit our shots. So I think, yeah, overall, I think we're very like organized right now. 
And I saw prior to this match yesterday, you did a quick interview and you and you said that at this tournament, you feel that it's very possible that you guys can win. And now it's looking even more possible than ever. Teams like Luminosity, Estrellas, both top four teams are out of this tournament now. So that road to the finals of potentially becoming a champion is even more, I guess, brighter. So what are your thoughts on that? I mean, strong teams or paper are out, but I mean, considering Dignitas, just they rolled over us and they won against Astralis as well. We have Mouseports beating Luminosity. So, I mean, the, the cal caliber of the teams here at the tournament is super high anyway. Like, there's no easy games in CS anymore. Like, all the teams are super good. They're always prepared for the games against you. And like, so we just got to keep on fighting. But of course, I still see a chance of us winning this tournament. We know that we have the tactics and the players to, to do that, so. All right, and my last question for you is we already saw Godsense also moving on towards the quarterfinals. Now we'll have two Swedish teams going on to play in the huge arena. And of course, we are here in Malmö, Sweden. So that has to be a fantastic feeling to be able to play in front of that huge crowd in your home country. Of course. I mean, it's always nice having people cheer for you. I, mean, I just remember the worst game I ever played was like the Katowice final against the full uh, Sportic Arena against Virtus Pro in the final. That was like... They had a six player on another team. Like, it's so hard. And hopefully, we have the Swedish crowd tomorrow or on Saturday that's going to keep on sharing for us. So, super excited. It's going to be fun. All right. Well, thank you very much, Fiber. Congratulations again on making it to the quarterfinals. Guys, it is time to take a breather and go to a short commercial break. But when we come back, we will digest everything that happened in that exciting series. have a lot of CSGO skins, and you want to sell them? Are you tired of dealing with unreliable sites? You don't have to search for the perfect place anymore. Kenguin.net is the answer. Largest selection of CSGO products, case contents, and picked for your satisfaction. Buy and sell skins on skins.kenguin.net. Check it, check it now.
The Scandinavian Showdown has a winner. NIP will be given the opportunity to play in front of the home crowd. Malmo will be gifted the ninjas over on Saturday. And of course, a sullen and short journey for the boys from Australis as they head back to Denmark out of the groups here at DreamHack Masters Malmo. Now, someone believed in Australis on the desk. Someone did. Just one member. S someone also coined the term magic. Unfortunately, it's okay. not a little bit of credit. Okay. Hey, mate, Duncan, we'll start with you. Okay. You had some belief in the Danes. I yeah, can't yeah. help but uh, turn our attention to it. Let's, let's start with map one. Let's start at the very beginning, as okay. the famous song does go, and maybe you can address some things that, that were, were not happening for Australia that should have been. Well, I mean, I, I thought Nip would, would take cash. Like yeah. I said, the, ho the whole reason I postulated maybe you could go for that crazy gamble by not buying out Cobblestone to see if Nip then doesn't pick it or if they pick it and go is because I, I actually felt like right now that's the ultimate comfort map for NIP. Like, they're not worried at all on this map. And, okay, sure, if you think back to the Major, cash was the map that Astralis ran all over Fnatic on who were really incredible on their T side. But that was, a, that was another one of those games that's over after the first half. And it looked like Astralis started so, so slow, and they were just losing every, 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 every conceivable type of round, it seems like. I mean, you kind of came into this one with the anticipation that NIP were going to win, but no one doubted that Cash was going to go the way of NIP. But in the fashion that they did it, it, it was very convincing. And there's, there's kind of, it's answered any, any sort of queries as to whether or not Cash was the best map, Bianca, for NIP. Yeah, definitely. I mean, it's obvious that they're comfortable playing uh, both sides. You could see how they have, uh, at, at times, uh, they, they have, they're simply really uh, well prepared on this map. They know what the meta is, they know what to expect from different teams, and they are really good at, at adapting to it. We'll have a, a replay later on showing how even in some situations when they were at a disadvantage, they managed to, to turn it uh, into a round win for them. So for me, that was pretty much an obvious win, more or less, for NIP. I expected that. Okay. And the, the uh, other two maps were a bit more of a question mark. Okay, and that's where we're going to focus most of our analysis then, because, I mean, Cash, we said NIP were going to win. They did so. Inferno, however, was a different one. I mean, we, we heard Froberg in the interview. He sat there and says, our Inferno is pretty much 50-50. Sometimes it seems to work, sometimes it doesn't. We saw which one we got this time, Robin. Yeah, I, I mean, NIP had a good game plan coming into all three maps, even on I gotta give props to Astralis on cash as well. Even though they lost the map, they had an idea on what NIP would do. You saw the NIP, the famous one that the threat came up with the mouth off strat and the smoke strat on the A bomb side. You saw actually most teams, they're ready for it, but they have no idea what to do with it. So then they just try and stick around on the bomb side. Astralis actually moved out when they saw the smoke, they just ran out of the bomb side. They have two options here either retake the bomb side or push into A, push, push somewhere and get some control. Astralis tried it, didn't really work out. Coming into Inferno, Obviously one of the more, most uh, comfortable maps for Astralis. NIP a little bit shaky on it. It looked uh, really bad in the beginning for, for Astralis on that map. Device missing a lot of shots. But then after, after round number five, Device actually started hitting those shots and he started winning a lot of rounds for, for Astralis and I, I, I think that, that was a turning point and he was also one of the main reasons why they actually got it as close as they, as they did on train because all props, I. People uh, keep on telling it, uh, people keep on saying that he that he's choking and whatnot. He did not choke this game. He played great this game, and he deserves all the credit for at, at least keeping his team in the running to possibly go out of, or come out of groups. And also, I think we have to give big props to Astralis on their T side play on Inferno, especially. They were down, I think, 4 0 and managed to win uh, a, swing a lot of rounds uh, together. After that, Dupree was especially on point in that second half, and as an entry fragger, he was picking uh, NIP apart. And like Freiburg said, they really didn't even know, you know what to expect. Astralis coming late into the round. I think they had, uh, Astralis had an excellent read on NIP's uh, setup for most of the time on their uh, CT side and they, they had the perfect counters for it. Combine that with Dupree's uh, uh, better performance in entry fragging as well and it was a really dominant performance for Astralis in the second half. I mean, to be 2-7 down to end 8-7 <coughs> is, is testament yeah. to Astralis having some real, real firepower behind them. Not enough to convert it into a victory though. And Yankee, you touched on it already, but you have something to show us, especially on cash. I'd love you to go. Yeah head on over and do what you do best and try and be break down, get a head around some of these plays that we witnessed during this game. All right, so the first example we have, it's a, yeah, I think it was a round number seven actually, and you can see right now at the beginning that NIP already lost two players, Forrest and Gatorade. It was because Device 
did a great move. Initially, they, they switched things up. They sent him towards A main first. He got a pick there. Then they moved him towards mid so that uh, NAP probably wouldn't, didn't expect him there. He got two entry kills. And then what happens? So you have a 5v3 and Dupree still, we can roll it, Dupree still goes aggressive here and for, for some reason pushes through the smoke. Maybe he felt he had a good timing or he heard something, but he gives one kill away. And at this point, when you look at it, so Cajun is the only player towards uh, the B bomb site here, and they have device rotating left and right and two players towards A. And what happens here, Freiburg, who is low, he's going to try and make a move by himself. He does the, the get right stuff, throwing a smoke here and a flash to get control of uh, checkers while his team is waiting towards the A main just for him to basically draw the rotations from some of the CT players towards B so then they can get into the bombs and we can play, uh, play it out now. And he actually manages to get into checkers here and Cajun doesn't expect him here and I don't I disagree with this position because, again, you still have a one-man advantage. You should probably stay somewhere in the site so that you can give your information to your teammates so they can rotate. He couldn't give any info uh, except for Freiburg being there. And as you saw in the rest of the clip, that caused uh, other Astralis players from A to rotate. And Pite had a couple of great frags. And NIP won a 3v5 round that shouldn't have been theirs. And it was a really important round for Astralis because it was the first round where they had the AWP and had an actual healthy buy. So now moving on to Inferno, this is the first gun round. And this is a, a, an example of a, a, how NIP changed their game. What you're going to see from them here, we can play it now, is how they use both Molotovs, a flash to get control of the banana, to, to clear that area of the map as well. And Astralis actually has a good reaction here. After the Molotovs go through, they try to flash in. But Pite, as you can see, is turned from that flash. And he gets a sick headshot as well on Cajun. So they have an advantage here. And now Astralis, again, has a decent reaction. They risk it. They put device alone with the AWP to hold B. They have two players in pit and one towards long, which is a pretty decent setup. You have it even when you have five people alive. But again, NIP goes for a really good uh, late round execute, having a smoke here a smoke towards pit, a Molotov here and a good flash from get right and we can roll it and see how they managed to get a, a, a pretty, what seems to be a pretty easy round, although, although uh, you can see how the players are forced to move from their positions. I think this is Kerrigan in the pit who is flashed and they get all the kills and uh, a good example of how you can play after you, you get a, an a early advantage on the T side and how to properly go for, for map control. And the last replay we have is from the from the last map. This is more of an example of how you should maybe play in some after plan situations. Now, obviously, it's much more difficult when you're in-game. There's a lot of uh, hectic things going around. Maybe the communication wasn't really on point. But this was, again, a really important round since Astralis just won their uh, gun round before this. So if they lose this round, they're probably on an eco. And uh, we can play it now. Gatorade is lurking towards Ali. The bomb is uh, planted. He gets one kill. He will get uh, another kill here, but he's really low and he has only 9 HP. And uh, Freiburg is the other player who is towards Electric Box. Yeah, we can pause it here. So Freiburg is here, the bomb is planted right here. So he can have a line from uh, Electric Box. Also, Gatorade right, can have the line all the way from, from Ali. And you can see that he is falling back all the way here because he knows that the Astralis players gave info that he is low and that he's all the way in the alley. So, so what Freiburg should have done here, I, in my opinion, I think he had time if the comms were good. He should have just hid either behind the electric box or behind the train here and buy more time for Getright to rotate somewhere, whatever his plan was. Maybe just buy more time in, in, uh, in Ivy for Freiburg to later on make his move. But we can roll it now. Freiburg decides to, to peak, uh, dies from, from Zipnix and that basically leaves Gatorade in an unwinnable uh, position because he only has 9 HP and the Astralis players even had a smoke. So maybe, you know, being more patient in, in situations like that, maybe it was a, an unnecessary uh, overpeak from Freiburg. And after this round, actually, Astralis started stringing a lot of rounds in a row and actually came back in the first half. We, it does feel like we still see examples of of this kind of mistakes being made, even at this level of play. And I, I appreciate that, Yanko. Good stuff from you, as always. One of one of the the mistakes that springs to mind immediately was the the fact that Astralis lost against a full eco. Like, how does that happen? How do rounds like that transpire? We've heard a lot from you, Yanko. Robin, 
like at this level of play, you've been put in top three of the world, and yet you lose to just pistols. And then that's when, the, I mean, people would assume this, the tilt train starts. I mean, there's two different kinds of approach you have on an anti-eco. Uh, one is that you spread out, you just c cover each corner, and you just stay stationed, and you play very defensive, watch out if they want to push, and then you do something together. The second one is what Astralis did both rounds, is that they go together, they hit something fast, and just hope that they're not ready for it. First round, it was a close one. They ended up winning that one after the pistol. This, the, and then the, th the, the third one, they decided to go all five inner, rush down lower, looked good so far. Only, I think they only lost one person, but they got the bomb down. After that, they started taking duels versus USPs. And uh, they, they just didn't hit their shots, which is kind of absurd. You're sitting there with, with rifles, and you're letting these uh, USPs from that long of a distance take duels with you. I think they had one P250, and they ended up it's, getting headshot. It's not even uh, duels. It were, they weren't 1v1 duels, but it was one Astralis player always against two NIP yeah, players. Yeah. Now, it's always... There is always the thing of NIP hitting some good shots, like Getra getting the, 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 the first kill in as well. But you should never be in that situation that you're always 1v2, in, especially when you have the guns and the resources and so on. And that's the problem, because then you can talk about all the other rounds after that, but that is the round that tilts you. That is the round that causes the, the choke in a sense that you had a really good start, and especially NIP after winning an eco round, their economy is looking awesome. Yeah. Astralis forces after that, NIP wins that round as well, and it's really hard for Astralis to come back after that. Yeah, round. I mean, after the second round, you're happy, right? You're like, oh, okay, we survived the scare, yeah. right? And then you, you can't afford to actually rush in the way they did, but like Yanko was saying as well, when you do they take those duels by yourself, I mean, take, even if it's still a pistol, they still do a lot of damage. Get one headshot on you and you're, and you're low. And then all of a sudden you can't peek, you're gonna lose, uh, you're gonna lose map control, you're gonna lose coverage, and that's when NIP just takes advantage of that. Just takes over the entire bomb site, and then you end up losing around. And that, like you're saying, it's massive tilt. After that, you're like, we should have won that. We, in a better situation. Instead, you have a little bit of a low buy. You still have an op on device, but he doesn't have an armor. He ends up going down right off the bat, and then uh, you're in a four on five. You just waste the money on an op, and you end up losing that round. And then it just it escalates. And, and just take a look at how NIP approached those rounds in, in the first half. Made right? you happy, right, Yank? Yeah, it was awesome. I mean, they were just standing, holding positions, see if they push. They don't push. All right, we know who's doing what. We have a set execute for that. Yeah. Smoke this off, go out, we know who's watching what. And they, I think, in the second and the third, round only lost one player. So that doesn't only mean you win the rounds, you have a really healthy economy coming into the, the half, you can afford to lose a round, maybe even two if you get the bomb plat, and keep on buying. So it, it really means a lot, and I would like to see more teams put more thought into these rounds. Are things starting to correlate for a Swedish team winning DreamHack Masters Malmö? Uh, Not forgetting think, that Guardian it, will be making a return. I mean, happen. there obviously will be two Swedish teams there, because Godsent will sure. be there as well. I think winning it's probably still a stretch. Like, I actually think right now, the team who ha must be loving this match the most is Na'Vi. Because Na'Vi, remember the whole storyline was like, oh, we'll see how we do, and we'll see what we can do without Guardian. Well, then, then they were like, oh, wait a minute, Guardian, get a, get a plane, mate, get over here. <laughs> Everyone's getting knocked out, the older teams are out. So suddenly, <laughs> Luminosity's gone, Astralis is gone. I mean, it's looking right now, like if you're Na'Vi, this is great, this is a real chance to win the tournament, even if Guardian's not in full form. So, I mean, obviously, if Nip can play like this, if they can have a, essentially that whole series there, I feel like people will put the choke on the whole series. Like the first map they were outplayed, that was Nip's map. Second map, they were actually pretty good. Remember, Inferno is not the best map of uh, the guys from Astralis, but yeah. they really showed they have some really good stuff on T side there. Third map, they were doing fine on the first half. That's absolutely a fine score to have. And then you win the pistol. That should be a chance to win the game there. It was then that they lost. They basically never won any buy rounds, and they gave up all those rounds to what was clutch play from Nip. Every time they had like pistols or they had the Swag Seven, whatever it was, Mike, get right, they, Mike they seven. were able to get kills from it. So if they can get that sort of clutch play, they certainly will contend for the title because the field's kind of thinning out at this at this point in time. But I, I still feel like Navi are kind of waiting in the wings, and, and they're loving the way this tournament's gone so far. And another curveball will be Mouse as well. You can get to see what they've done. They've knocked out, you know, the defending major champions. Intrigued to see what more we get to see from Mouse uh, as they come into the later stages of this tournament course, Saturday and Sunday. Tickets still available for that, by the way, guys. If you want a seat in the Malmo Arena, do be sure to check it out. It is at masters.dreamhack.com. So you go check that one out as well. While you're checking things out, give the score esports a look. It enables you to follow all of CSGO as well as other esports, gives you stats, the news articles, and also up-to-date scores. So if you're on the go, you can still stay on top of Dreamhack Masters Malmo. It's been a pleasure so far. One more team will secure a spot in the quarterfinals. Seven of the eight are locked in. And now it's between Envy and Tempo to find out who will be picking up the win. But NIP have done it, and they will have an opportunity to play with the Swedish crowd behind them. Freiburg said in the interview, one of his worst performances was with a Swedish crowd behind him. He's looking to change things here at DreamHack Masters Malmo. We'll see you after the break.